Hey dudes, welcome to Splash from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today is such a thrill for me. I get to interview yet another crush of mine from childhood, and I'm just pretty psyched up about it. I've been trying to get her for a while on the show, and I finally did it. Maddie Corman. You may remember her. She played Eric Stoltz's sister in Some Kind of Wonderful um, Jennifer Conley's friend in Seven Minutes in Heaven. And, for those of you comedy nerds out there who love Andrew Dice Clay, she played the role of Zuzu Petals in Dice's movie, The Adventures of Ford Fairlane. And I'm so excited. I'm having her on today. This is going to be so awesome. Oh, oh my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Uh, I'm excited. I got so much to ask her in such a short time, too. It's going to be pretty good. Uh, yes. Uh, let's see. Got all my questions loaded up and ready to go in just a minute. Uh, this is going to be so, <clears throat> this is going to be so exciting. I can't wait. <clears throat> uh, yeah, this is going to be awesome. Interviewing Maddie Corman. The fresh-faced, cute girl in 80s teen movies. Well, without further ado, here's my interview with Maddie Corman. Hello. Hi, Maddie. Hi. It's Tommy, and we are live. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Oh, my God, this is just a tremendous honor for me because I'm such a huge fan of you, and I had a huge crush on you when I was growing up. <laughs> oh, well, that makes my day. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Oh, so when did you know that you wanted to be an actress? When did I know I wanted to be an actress? Probably when I was about four. I mean, really little. My mom took me to see um, the Nutcracker, and I knew even at four that I was not a good dancer, but I wanted to be up on that stage. Uh -huh. I liked seeing kids on the stage, and I thought, why couldn't I do that? Well, probably because I can't dance, but let me think. Um, so soon after, I started doing school plays, and I remember, even in first grade, doing The Foolish Molar, and really wanting the lead role of the molar who got the cavity. Right. And um, I scored that role in a spin, <laughs> but I wanted it. It was something that I truly wanted early on. And I still like it, which is both great and difficult. Yeah. I've, I've been an actor for a long time, too, with stage and stuff, trying to break into movies and TV. It's a hard life, but you know what? you got to love it to keep going. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's 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 a moment that you treasure. The moment you find out you get the job, and then when you do it. Exactly. So your first movie that you did it was the first one I saw you in, um, Seven Minutes in Heaven, and yes, sir. I've always loved you in this movie. You're so cute and charming in it. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. That was a great. That was that was a great time. That was very. I was in high school, mm -hmm. kind of trying to figure out my own life, and then getting to do it in a movie at the same time. So that was pretty great. Um, yeah, it was my first movie. I got kind of spoiled early on. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, just a simple audition process? It was. I mean, it was an audition process. I don't know that it was simple. I think at the time, you know, looking back, I didn't think of it as anything other than just another audition. I had already been working for a couple of years. I had done some after-school specials, which, you know, in the 80s, if you're of a certain age, you know. Yep. Um, and I had done some theater and some commercials. And I liked the script a lot. Um, and I did think it was exciting that it was one of the leads, but I didn't realize what a big deal it was um, until I was kind of going, oh, wow, I really have to leave school for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um and, yeah, I read for the director, Linda, who was also one of the writers. And then I read for Fred Ruth, who was a producer, but also a very uh, well-known cast. 
casting director. Right. But I didn't know any of that at the time, so I was just kind of chill. And I wish I could say that it was a wonderful acting, uh, piece of acting. It's not totally me, but I definitely, <laughs> easily related to Polly. Yeah. And probably still do in some ways. And it was great. And, and Jenny and Byron and I went to school together, um, even the days I wasn't shooting. I'd go there and, and have tutoring. So we really did get very close. And that's where I met Lauren Holly, who I worked with later. And, oh my gosh, Terry Kinney was in that movie with me. And just last year, I ended up doing a play at Lincoln Center that he directed. And right. we played that scene, which is highly, weirdly inappropriate now, and I don't think it would ever be made today, but it's the scene yeah. where Polly goes to New York City by herself, um, and then this nice photographer kind of saves her, and that was Terry, and we have this really bizarre scene where this 15-year-old is asking a nice 20-something photographer to talk about orgasm. Yep. So we watched that scene again and had a good laugh. Yeah, that scene, I'll tell you something, you sell that scene so well, you're so adorable in it, and it's very it's it's very creepy and sweet at the same time, that scene. Well, he happens to be a terrific guy, and we're still friends, so that's good. And now it seems like we're the same age, because something happens when you get over 30 and everybody becomes the same age, so yeah. he's a great actor, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's great. Yeah, Denny Dillon plays the aunt. I'm yes, spo- she's hilarious. Yeah, I'm supposed to interview her pretty soon. Oh, great. Well, tell her I say hi. Oh, I sure will. And Billy Worth plays the object of your affection. I saw him yes. uh, a couple of years ago at a convention. He's, he hasn't changed. He still looks the same. Oh, really? Gosh, yeah. I have not seen or heard from him in a long time. Oh, but, yeah, that was like my first kiss on screen, and pretty much my first kid ever. Mm-hmm. That was not the most comfortable, um, but fun. Yeah. <laughs> and then Byron, too, who I love. And I am so close with Byron, who's fantastic, who's a musician, still a great actor. Yeah. Anyway. And, uh, yeah. Polly Draper, Marshall Bell are in it. Yes, Polly, I love and see occasionally. I actually worked with um, one of her sons in love and misunderstanding so mm-hmm. we saw each other again and and she's terrific you know part of the new york in addition to being a tv star definitely part of the new york theater scene which i have um remained a part of thankfully she's awesome yeah it was the francis ford coppola production at zoetrope it was it was i mean i, I can't say that he was hanging around but it was um his company and Fred Roos is um his long time um, was a long time casting director and it was really his baby. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, we had a great time. Shot all over New Jersey, um, parts of Westchester, a little bit in New York City. Um, yeah, and I really was 15. Jenny mm-hmm. Connelly was 14. I mean, we were really young. It's very rare then, and, and now to cast someone the actual age. Yep. You know, actual teenagers don't usually play teenagers. Oh, we really were. Yep. She was coming off of uh, Once Upon a Time in America. Yes, yes. Uh, how long did it take to make the movie? Oh, gosh. How long did it take? You know what? I can't fully remember. But definitely, um, you know, the 80s, so movies really took their time. I would say a month or so. Um, oh, okay. can't remember exactly, but definitely a nice, um, maybe a couple of months. And we definitely, that this and some kind of wonderful, we had rehearsal, mm-hmm. which um, was amazing and, and made it really great when we would actually get to the scenes. We had rehearsed, um, we'd rehearsed them for a little bit before. Nice. And then, yeah, you got to do the classic John Hughes movie, Some Kind of Wonderful. I did. I did. So lucky. Yes. Did, uh, was that an audition process? Mm-hmm. Then I, you know, went on on tape in New York, in New York City, where I live. Well, I lived in Washington. Um, and you know, the story of that is kind of crazy because 
I auditioned on tape. I got a call back for the director, um, who at the time was Martha Coolidge, who did not end up directing. Yeah. Um, and in between my first, second, and then ultimately third audition, because then I had to read um, weeks later, Michael Chinich, who was a producer um, for John Who, and then I met John Who. So I had a lot of auditions for that. But in the middle of that process, my mother got really sick, um, had a stroke, and went to the hospital. Oh. And um, she was dying. I mean, it was really terrible and bad. And I actually found out in those days, didn't have cell phones. Yeah. We had, um, you had to call your, your answering machine and, and check in. And so I called to check in and it said I had this call back for this movie. And my mother was in the hospital and I was wearing, you know, shorts and a t-shirt or whatever. I had gone on to go see my mom in the hospital. And it wasn't a long thing. I mean, she was only very sick for two weeks. So this was in the middle of the chaos. But I talked to her and she said, go. You know, she was still a stage mom from her, from right. her hospital bed. And I went. And I barely remember. I mean, it was a really traumatic time, but I did the audition and I came back to the hospital. I was, I guess, 16 at the time, so I must have taken a cab and then come back. And I told my mom that I got the part. I just lied, you know, because, um, I mean, it was an audition on tape. I, there was no way I was going to know whether I got the part, but right. I told her I got the part. Um, and she was very happy. <laughs> and she <laughs> passed away a few days later. So that movie, um, the other thing is about that movie, my um, junior high school prom was a few days before my mom got really sick and went to the hospital. Actually, the day she got sick. But uh -huh. my dad and my mom went out because I was at the prom and my brother was on a sleepover. And um, they saw Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That was their date. Mm -hmm. And there was a preview for some kind of wonderful play, which was crazy because she knew I had had my first audition for it, and they're like, yes, yes, you didn't get it. But Tom Hughes was so popular at that time that they were making previews for the movies before they even cast them. You know, it was just a drummer, just hands. And it wasn't, you know, Stuart Matthewson, it was just a person that got drumming and said, you know, some kind of wonderful coming next year. Um, so she knew about the movie, which was kind of beautiful and great, and... Then I did end up getting a movie, but only after a couple of more auditions. They also really wanted to make sure that I was not in a complete mental breakdown. Um, yeah. Because I think they knew that my mom had died, and as lovely as people are, they don't want some 16 year old who's in, you know, deep pain, which I was, but I was able to still work. And the work was really a lifesaver um, for my whole family my dad, my brother, and and me, we all went. Um, we all went out to Los Angeles to shoot this film. And yes, like you said, John Hughes at the time was very big. It wasn't like we didn't know what this was. It was a big deal. Yeah. Um, Pretty in Pink was about to come out, so so it was an incredible time in my life, and also a very sad time in my life. Really, both things. It's amazing. Wow. Yeah, Eric Stoltz is known for being a method actor. Did you see that a lot on this movie? Yeah, Eric Stoltz is amazing. He's one of my favorite people and still one of my best friends. Mm -hmm. um, we, <laughs> we definitely still have a brother-sister relationship. Um, he's, you know, become one of our great TV directors. He's really, um, really talented. And he actually is the director showrunner, producer on Madam Secretary, mm -hmm. just uh, worked with him. <laughs> so that was kind of fun after all these years. But we're, yes. um, he's, he's been a wonderful friend to me. Uh, I adore him. Uh, I mean, he drives me crazy still, but I adore him just like in the old days. <laughs> That's so cool. And uh, Leah Thompson, I met her at a convention a couple of years ago. I almost fainted because I love her so uh, much. Yeah. She's great. And she met Howie, her husband, doing that movie. Yep. So we kind of watched them fall in love. Mm -hmm. It was a good thing that Martha didn't end up directing it. I mean, there was a lot of drama. There was a lot of 
angst and drama of directors being fired and actors being fired. And, mm -hmm. um, but for me, got through it. Because honestly, at the end of the day, I was actually hyper aware, even as a 16, I think I turned 17 during the movie. I have a birthday. Um, but I certainly knew that the movie was awesome and fun, but not the most important thing, because I had dealt with like that thing in just a minute before. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see, Molly Hagen, what was she like? Oh, Molly Hagen's great. We're still, um, can you hear me? I just switched the speaker for a moment because I'm turning something off. Okay, wait, now okay. I'm back. Uh, Molly, terrific. Uh, we didn't have too many scenes together, but we've actually stayed in touch. Mm -hmm. um, she was great. Mary Stewart was, um, mm -hmm. still is, fantastic. And she and Eric were like my, you know, big brother and sister during that time. Because again, I actually was a teenager, but everybody else was not. <laughs> Just yeah. obviously not. Um, you know, they were me. And so I was kind of the baby, but I really definitely did not want to be, but they still all kind of took me under their wing, and that was nice. Um, mm -hmm. And, yeah, we had a, we had a really good time. It, it, was, it was a little bit of a rough beginning because some of us were hired by a different director and, and a wonderful director, and mm -hmm. um, there was a rehearsal period with that director that I wasn't a part of because I had a smaller part and was young. Um, so I came out to start my rehearsal and I started pretty much the first day that Howie started. Mm -hmm. um, but there were a lot of actors that were not very happy. I was just pretty psyched to get out of Westchester and um, to Hollywood. I was mm -hmm. pretty happy to just be doing this first thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but we definitely had a shaky beginning. There were some cast changes. There were writing changes, and, um, but I was pretty, um, and I was worried that I was going to get fired, um, but for the most part, it was, um, for me, an extraordinarily <coughs> great, uh, place to be, and then, um, after the summer, I went back and forth, I went back to my, what was I, senior, I guess, I guess I started my senior year of high school, mm -hmm. and then every couple of weeks, I would go back. It certainly, yeah, it. it certainly made a classic, I have to say. Yeah, I don't think that we knew we were making a classic, but we did have a very good time. And, you know, there was, I knew that everybody was very good at what they were doing. Um, I remember watching Elliot say it in a scene that I wasn't in and just watching him going, wow, this guy is phenomenal. And like I said, we did have mm -hmm. rehearsals. So as opposed to some movies, um, where you don't meet people if you're not in scene with them. I actually did get some time with everybody because we sat and read the whole movie um, and then rehearsed certain scenes together. Wow. So that, was, that was lucky and lovely. Wow. And then you, uh, you did a short, you did one of the first Fox Network series called Mr. President. Oh, yeah. I don't even, I don't even remember the show and I remember a lot of short-lived series but George C. Scott, Madeline Kahn, I mean, that's like, oh, my God, like a career highlight, you know? Yeah, I mean, it was, um, it was a little crazy. Yeah, I mean, I get a little crazy, I guess. Um, I was, you know, I finished some kind of wonderful. I went back to high school, mm -hmm. and I auditioned. And Fox, you're right, Fox was trying to do it. It was barely a network. had the Tracy Alden show with, you know, The Simpsons just being a little interstitial cartoon on that, and they were doing a show with the Chief Scott, and I auditioned, they did not get the part, but then apparently George C. Scott wanted me for the part, and mm -hmm. so I got a very late notice that I was not only got the part, but had to move to Los Angeles, because it was already picked up for a series, and so it was very crazy, because, um... As I mentioned, you know, my mother was no longer alive. Yeah. Dad is a lawyer, and I have a little brother, so it was like, and I was 17, and a young 17. You know, even though I had done movies, I was, 
was not very worldly. And so I had to move very quickly to Los Angeles. Yeah. My dad couldn't just pick up and move. Um, so he had a family friend who I adore, my friend Margie, who was 21, who came out with me, and we lived in the Oakwood Apartments, and she was my guardian. And I started, I mean, I moved and started work very quickly. And the first season, it wasn't Madeline Kahn. It was Carlin Glynn, who is Mary Stuart Masterson's real-life mother. So I had met her, and I already loved Mary Sue, and mm-hmm. she is fantastic and uh, maternal and lovely, and she played my mom on the show. So that was nice. They had a right. little bit of a a little bit of a family, and then second season, they changed the whole show. We went from being a film show to a four-camera tape show, more like a sitcom, and um, there was no more Carlin. She was, well, she wasn't really replaced, but her character left the president, which, of course, makes no sense, except for maybe now. Yeah. And, um... And Madeline Kahn came in to play our wacky aunt. Mm-hmm. And so, yes, it was amazing to get to work with Madeline. And she's one of, I think, the funniest human beings I have ever met. And I'm lucky um, to have worked with her. I learned a ton. But it was also very sad mm-hmm. to not have my pretend mom. So we, you know, another maternal figure. It was not fun. Mm-hmm. Um, so we did do two seasons. And then George, at some point during that time, had got really sick, had a heart attack, um, but came back. So you know that was um, that was an amazing time, but a difficult time, mm-hmm. and and a little bit unsettling for me, who had always had every set I had been on felt like a family, yeah. and this felt a little more like a job. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a great you know, one of the things in my life that I did and I was able to live out there after I turned 18. My my guardian left and so I lived on my own for a while in L.A. as a very young girl and that was, um, I'm here to tell the tale, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then you did one of my favorite comedies of all time and you worked with the man who made me want to be a comedian, Andrew Dice Clay, in The Adventures of Ford Fairlane. Yes, yes, Andrew. to balance it between being the sweet innocent girl you always play and being this kind of raunchy you know rocker chick and you, yeah. you do some really funny stuff in it like sing the carpenter song and um, yeah. I like it when, when when Ford is being inducted into the sorority house you're like rolling your eyes and you're doing like the jack off hand motion <laughs> yeah yeah that was that was also fun yeah because it was annoying that <laughs> Yeah. The guys that you think are going to be both are really not. Andrew was very funny and raunchy out loud, but yeah. he was also truly a gentleman and, and concerned about, um, at least with me, very concerned about my safety and, and everything like that. And he was like a big brother. And um, Laura and Holly, I got to work with again on that. And we worked together in seven minutes in heaven and on on those fair ladies. And, um, and I think he was there the same thing. I mean, he was really, he was really a doll. And, and it was a crazy time because he was very controversial. 
Yep. Um, but making the movie was just a lot of fun. And it was hard because I am really a morning person. And she really the night. Um, yeah. Meaning, you know, we started work at 5 p.m. and finished at 5 a.m. And even though you're supposed to, if you're doing that sleep during the day, I've never been very good at that. So it's very <laughs> exhausting but exhilarating time. I'm a night person, so if I had a schedule like that, I'd love it. You'd be fine. <laughs> yeah. And, um, I think you have to be if you're a swimmer, but you're also hopeful. Yeah, plus I'm a comedian, so I'm at the I'm at the clubs late and stuff when I get yeah. the chance. You know? But yeah, there was so much controversy surrounding the movie. You know, they had this preconceived notion that the movie was going to be sexist, racist, homophobic, and let's be honest, it, yeah. was, it was all those things, but it was fucking hilarious. Definitely, um, it, there was a hard time. I mean, listen, the premiere, there was a bomb threat. You know, it was right when um, wow. if there were people not showing up places, if he was performing, uh, protesting all over the place. And, you know, it was it was tough. I, I think the movie definitely suffered for it. But I will say, as someone who was in the movie, I have people of every persuasion who have told me it's one of their favorites. Oh my God, so many great, some of my favorite lines he's ever said is in this movie. You know, like, like yeah, you get down on your knees to punch him in the balls and he says, hey baby, a simple thank you would suffice. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. That's I, I love that. I got to meet Wayne Newton. I mean, it was a, it was yeah. a, wild, a wild time. Yeah, you, it, uh, uh, the, the part where he's talking to one of the twin girls at the club at the beginning and he's all, Oh yeah, the twins, but you're not identical, huh? <laughs> oh my gosh, I haven't watched that movie in a long time. Maybe there might be time. Oh, I watch it quite a bit. I actually watched it last night. <laughs> um, have you ever seen him live? Yes, I have. He's brilliant. He's a brilliant stand-up. He really is. Yeah, I almost I saw... saw him during that time. He had the audience in the palm of his hand. And, uh, yeah, I really am kind of like a nice, nerdy girl, so it was pretty crazy to be at a Dice concert, and then I mm -hmm. think I also was with the uh, you know, helicopter flying around, and mm -hmm. all, these, all these people. Um, I knew who Wayne Newton was, but that was really <laughs> <laughs> I almost saw him two years ago. Um, he canceled his performance in San Francisco, and so uh, my my overdraft fee was saved by the refund, I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, I haven't seen him. I haven't seen him in person or, um, you know, in concert in a very long time, but I have nothing but good feelings for him and Hot Up Johnny and all the, all the gang that used to be around him. Yeah, noodles. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I have, I have lots of comedians on here, and they tell me all the stories about the comedy store days with all those guys. They really were his guys. It wasn't just, you know, an act. He really was. And his parents came, and everybody had a video camera. I mean, it was a Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you and Vivica Davis worked together in PCU. Yeah, we were the women in. Yes. My dad took me to see that movie when I was like 10 or 11, and we thought it was oh the dumbest God. movie we had ever seen in our lives. <laughs> I had Vivica on last week, and she was the most interesting uh, guest I've had on. Yeah, she's a fascinating human being. Yeah. Her a lot. What was it like being directed by Hart Bachner? What was it like being directed by Hart Bachner? Um, it was um, lovely. Easy to do. It was very... Um, very happy when people were 
funny, and yeah. I like to think that I'm funny, and <laughs> Heart would let me ad lib a little bit, and yeah. honestly, that's another one that I didn't get right away. I, I think they had hired someone, and we shot that in Toronto, and I auditioned, and I, I really thought it was funny, because I had just gotten out of college a couple years before, and I knew that to be true, you know, a lot of what was in the script, um, just all the factions. Um, but they hired somebody else, a local actor, and then I think they just decided, you know what, even though it's women as number two, it's a really important part, and I got the call and got to go there. Um, but Hart was, Hart was great. You know, I like being directed by, well, I tend to like directors. Right. Um, but he, especially maybe directors who come from an acting background, you know, is very um, positive and inclusive to us, certainly me, um, during the process. And we would laugh. I mean, he sent me a bit of movie sent me to get um, ultimate frisbee lessons. So on my days off, I would go try to learn how to play ultimate frisbee because that one scene, and mm. I was terrible at it. But um, but he was teasing um, in a good-hearted way. Nice. Yeah, and again, that was that we kind of became like a family on that one too because we were young. Most of us single, and I, I don't think I was single, but we were all living in the Four Seasons Hotel in <clears throat> Toronto. I mean, mm -hmm. how bad could that be? So we had yeah. some fun. Not not a lot of fun. I mean, I'm like I said, I really um, have kept it pretty pretty clean. But we did. Have, <laughs> it was fun to be in the hotel with all the all the actors. Yeah, yeah. Hart Bachner. Was in it was in the you know it was, it was a big group. Yeah, Hart Bachner, he's known for playing assholes a lot, you know, and I've, I've, I've heard that he's yeah. a really nice guy, though. No, he definitely wasn't an asshole. I mean, it was distracting to have someone that good looking behind the camera. It was like, <laughs> why am I in front of the camera and this very handsome person is yelling action? Like, we should really switch places. But, <laughs> you know, and I think it was hard because it was one of his first movies, and it was a big film, and the writers were there, so... Hart was great. There was definitely a lot of um, Paul Schiff, who was a producer, was definitely very involved, and the um, the, the, the director of photography had a lot to say. Like, there's definitely um, a group effort, <coughs> and and Hart was not trying to say I am Francis Ford Coppola. You know, he was yeah. kind of like, all right, the best idea in the room wins, and let me try to make this move well. So. It was a very nice atmosphere. It wasn't a tense set. It's a pretty playful set. Nice. So to me, you know, who knows? When you when you ask other people, you can hear uh, you hear the same. But Vivica and I had a good time. Oh, that's good. That's good. Uh, last thing here, you did. Um, all American Girl, the the short lived yeah. Margaret Cho show. I used to watch the show. It was so hilarious, and I really thought. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I really thought the show was going to, you know, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Liberate the the Asian community in Hollywood, but sadly it didn't. You know. No, definitely wasn't was a little bit ahead of its time. I would say. Mm -hmm. People ask me all the time if, if, I, if I know Margaret Cho, because I'm a San Francisco comic, too, and I haven't had the pleasure yet, but I heard she's very nice. She is very nice. She, um, you know, I found out definitely later how hard a time she was having <laughs> during that show. But again, mm -hmm. we, um, we spent a lot of time together, B.D. Wong and Judy Gold and Margaret Cho and myself. We really, <laughs> we had a good time. It was it was difficult. She was definitely struggling with um, the writers and the producers and really being told what to do when she was hired to be Margaret and then kind of molded or, or folded when she was herself. Um, they kind of wanted her to be more of what a typical sitcom right. actor was and what makes Margaret brilliant is not that. You know, she is yeah. not an all-American girl, and that we—I think we all thought it was going to be a little bit of a subversive um, show, and it wasn't. Um, I mean, it was just in the fact that it existed, yeah. and that there was an Asian American family in the center of the show, which had never 
I don't think had ever been before. Um, so I was proud and happy to be a part of that, but there was definitely a struggle to figure out how to get Margaret's voice on television. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you guys even had Quentin Tarantino on there. We did, we did. Yep. On our show. Yep. He, he pretty much ignored me. I mean, he loved Margaret. He was somewhat um, just seemingly fascinated and um, delighted by her. He adored her. So he would hang around a lot. It wasn't just, and then I think they wrote him an episode because he was hanging around a lot. But he mm -hmm. really loved Martha. The rest of us, well, I can't speak for anybody else. But for me, um, I don't think <laughs> I don't think he remembered me. But I did run into him at Sunday. Mm -hmm. That we worked together on All American Girl. I'm one of the few who did a television show with with him. Mm -hmm. You're very lucky, though, because he's one of the greats. But, yeah, and you know, and it's, I think we're all reevaluating a lot of things with the uh, latest revelation about Uma. Yeah, and there's no denying that um, that he makes really great movies. Mm -hmm. I agree. And so uh, you're still working, obviously, these days. I'm still working. What what do what you? Mm -hmm. What are you? What else are you up to? And uh, do you have any projects you want to plug? Oh sure. Well, I'm doing a play right now. So if any of your um, audience is in New York City, uh, I'm doing a show called Women on Fire, and uh, it's um, mm -hmm. at the Royal Family Theater. You can Google Women on Fire Royal Family. There's some great actresses. It's all actresses, all women telling stories. It's not my personal story. It's written by the wonderful uh, playwright Chris Henry, mm -hmm. but we all have our own stories to tell, and like tonight, the rotating cast, but tonight we have Kathy Curtin, who's on Stranger Things and Orange is the New Black, and um, also Connie Shulman, who's also plays Yoga Jones on Orange is the New Black, and me, and who else is in it? Oh, wonderful Kathleen Shulfont, who's a brilliant um, actress, <coughs> an incredible group of um, awesome ladies and young and old and dancers and so that's really fun and what else um you know i'm recurring i'm gonna be back on younger um mm -hmm. the tv series and um yeah a bunch of tv stuff and i'm writing my own my own one woman show so i'll come back on when that's happening and and promote that oh i love that i'm actually uh working on a one-man show myself uh, for Good my for, for my stand up, I've been procrastinating it for the past seven years, but now I think I'm ready. Especially after all I've been, I've been through with my car accident and everything, I happened to me and stuff. Oh, do it, do it, do it, do it. It's helpful. When, I, I personally think it's helpful. I mean, I love talking to you and talking talk about all the good stuff. It's helpful to hear about people people's um, pain as well as people's. Um, Beautiful. That is so well said. I agree with you, Maddie. And I thank you so much for taking the time this morning. This My has just pleasure. been... pleasure. It was really nice to meet you and talk to you. And um, I wish you all happiness and good luck and everything else. Yes, this has been so tremendous. Um, yeah, I'd like to have you back on when you do your one-woman show and maybe talk about a couple other things we didn't get to talk about. We will. And I, uh, can I send you a, a, um, a, f a Facebook friend request? Sure. Okay. I just did it. <laughs> okay. Have a great day. You too. Have a great day. Well, there you have it. Maddie Corman. Ain't she a sweetheart? 
Thank you so much, Maddie. You exceeded my expectations. You were just absolutely tremendous. That's a big word for me on this show today. Tremendous. I think I'm going to use that word much more often. Well, um, if you like this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Add me as a friend on Facebook. Join my Tommy Kovac Comedian page on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter and all that fun stuff. Well, that's all the time we have this week on Splat from the Past. And until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes.